I'm going to throw in the word compassion here. What is, from, again, from these teachings, what is compassion? We, under, we know right away it's so valuable. But I can tell you just right now, if you look at it from the point of view of the aura, if there is an auric exchange of compassion, it's not even coming from the part of us down here. It's coming from that higher to higher. So compassion is something of the divine. It's a divine quality. It's a divine attribute. And it means, okay, if I'm not my physical body, if I'm a soul inhabiting this body, but I'm kind of identifying with my body and the behavior of my persona, that's seeing things in the appearance of things, but not who I really am. So let's say someone I love is doing something not good. And I think, oh gosh, what are they up to now? You know, and I'm looking at the appearance of it. That's not compassion. Compassion is the ability to see beyond that and say, you know, you're doing something really stupid right now, but I recognize you are this divine spark. Mother Teresa used to say, I see the face of Christ in everyone I help. And she was dealing with those in the worst of human conditions. And she says, I'm doing it to give them their sense of dignity, their sense of value, that they matter in this world. Even if it was their last day on earth as a little child, that same soul is still in there. So compassion is seeing that the soul is inherently good, no matter what horrible thing that person is doing. As Barbara would humorously say, well, if you don't feel you can show compassion to somebody for someone doing something really bad, you say, God, you love them for me right now. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> I'm working towards it, but I'm not quite there yet. But if humanity is a collection of living souls, then what do we have to do? We have to have compassion for humanity. You know, it's very interesting. One of the, the gentlemen's, uh, was it Patrick Moore, he co-founded um, Greenpeace. Do you remember Greenpeace? Sure. Yeah, okay, Greenpeace. I mean, it's amazing. They literally helped end nuclear testing. And they saved the whales. They did this amazing stuff in the beginning. It was one of the first kind of really grassroots efforts, right? But I loved what he said. He said, well, Greenpeace represented, green was the earth. We have to take good care of the earth. But peace is people. So right from the beginning, he says, you know, today we took, we've taken people out of it. We talk about being green, but where are the people? We treat us like we're not part of nature. And this disconnect between us and nature is part of the problem today. He eventually left the organization because he said they lost their way. They got too successful, and then it became about raising more money and what other cause can we, they were kind of finding causes and some of them weren't even causes, but they had to find something to keep feeding, you know, the momentum that was going on there. But in the process, they were losing their way. So we cannot take people out of the equation. And it's happening again with this AI, thinking that the, a machine could be alive. It is never going to be alive because there's no soul in that machine. We are what matters. So we have to start by seeing the world, meaning the civilization, in the eyes of compassion, meaning that every soul on earth is precious. And even if collectively as humanity, we're not living up to our potential, the potential is there. And what's even more important, this is how the divine sees us. Or if they took our mistakes too seriously, they would not want to come around us at all, right? So they have to see beyond that. So they see us already in our highest and best self, even if we're doing the stupidest thing on earth. And they're incredibly patient. 